Hi, this is David Farkas with Red Dot Forum. Earlier this month, Leica announced the official release of the S3 medium format digital camera. A couple weeks later, and I have one of the very first production units here in the studio. We'll go over what's new, what's not, and I'll share some real world pictures I took with the camera during a recent landscape outing to Patagonia. So stick around. Leica first teased the S3 back at Photokina in 2018. You can check out my coverage of the event on Red Dot Forum. I'll leave links in the description below. Now, following the announcement, I was able to handle a working prototype, and I had a great conversation with the S System product manager, Tony Felsner. Again, all that's on Red Dot Forum. Many months later, I finally had the opportunity to take a pre-production unit to Patagonia, where I put the camera to use in the field. And while the hardware and the firmware weren't yet in their final versions, the results were outstanding nonetheless. But before we get into that, let's do a quick recap on the Leica S system so you have an idea where the S3 fits in. Now, back in 2008, on the eve of a different Photokina show, Leica unveiled the S2 and a new series of S lenses. This was the first medium format camera from Leica ever. They had never made a medium format camera before, only 35 millimeter and smaller. Now it was also the world's first medium format camera built from the ground up as a digital camera. See, up until that point, other companies were bolting digital backs on their legacy film camera bodies. This made them modular, yes, but also bulkier and definitely not weather sealed, which is a problem for a landscape photographer like me. The older cameras also had somewhat slow autofocus, middling frame rates, weird dual battery situations, and laggy interfaces. The Leica S2, by comparison, was revolutionary at the time, offering up 37.5 megapixels of resolution on a sensor 60% larger than full frame with weather sealing, faster shot-to-shot -shot times, quick and accurate autofocus, excellent battery life, a responsive interface, and a stunningly clear optical viewfinder, all in an ergonomic and balanced body that wasn't much larger than a full-frame DSLR. Now, I was lucky enough to be one of the first to test the S2 in Germany back in the summer of 2009. And really, from then on, I was hooked. Hooked on the image quality. Hooked on the amazing lenses. I even took the S2 on family beach vacations. Look, it wasn't perfect, and the lens lineup rolled out slower than many would have liked, myself included, but man, that was a great camera. Then the S2 got a bit of an update in 2012 when it was replaced with the S-Type 006. Uh, just so you understand the type numbers, this was around the time Leica decided to ditch generation numbers like M8, M9, and opted instead for the type system, M-Type 240. They've since gone back to a more conventional naming scheme, hence the M10, the SL2, the Q2, and now the S3. Okay, back to the S. The S006 kept the same sensor, but featured many improvements under the hood. They had increased buffer memory, expanded ISO range, a better LCD, and built-in GPS, to name a few. But the really big update would come two years later in 2014, when Leica announced the S-Type 007. Now with that move to a CMOS sensor and a more powerful Maestro 2 image processor, the 007 offered live view, Wi-Fi, 4K video, an incredible 15 stops of dynamic range, along with excellent low light ability and up to three and a half frames per second frame rate. Again, I had the privilege of testing the camera before its release, taking it on an epic 10 day solo photo adventure to Iceland where I lived out of a Land Rover. If you haven't checked out my two-part review slash travelogue on Red Dot Forum, I highly recommend you do. I'll leave a link below. For me, the 007 was a game changer. Image quality was simply on another level from anything I'd shot before. And not just because of the resolution or the lenses. Those were great, sure. But what really got me was the dynamic range, the color reproduction, tonality, and the ridiculous file malleability in post. 
See, in the past, when trying to shoot a high contrast scene, I'd either need to use graduated ND filters or exposure bracket or both. Once I understood what the 007 could do, I just exposed for the highlights, let everything else go dark, and pulled up the shadows in post. It was basically single shot HDR that didn't look like HDR. So it's no surprise that the S007 became my main landscape workhorse in the years following. It addressed most of the shortcomings of the earlier generations and just produced consistently gorgeous images. And now we have the fourth generation Leica S camera, the S3. So what's different? Obviously, the headlining feature here is the 64 megapixel sensor at the heart of the camera. Now, conventional wisdom has held that if you make the pixels on a sensor smaller, which is what you need to do if you intend to cram almost double the amount into the same physical dimensions, it's that its low light ability and dynamic range would suffer. Yet, amazingly, Leica engineers seem to have pulled off the impossible. Not only does the new 64 megapixel sensor match up to the S007's incredible 15 stops of dynamic range, but it also expands the ISO range significantly. The 007 operated from ISO 100 to 12,500, while the new S3 bumps the range two full stops, all the way up to ISO 50,000. Let's talk about the sensor just for a minute. It is unique to Leica and features some other cool aspects. They have a newly formulated color filter array, or CFA, where they finely tuned and formulated the red channel specifically to more faithfully reproduce skin tones, as well as performing better for commercial photography applications where those cherry apple reds just wreak havoc on digital sensors. Now to overcome the pixel size shrink, Leica has also utilized a dual gain design and updated the entire imaging pipeline from the parallel D to A converters to the on-ship noise reduction. And because of that, the S3 gets a welcome benefit from that new low noise and low heat sensor. Instead of being capped to just 60 or 125 second exposure at base ISO, as we did on previous generations, the S3 can now shoot exposures up to eight minutes long. This has been one of the most frequently requested updates to the S system since the beginning, especially for landscape and architectural photographers. So it's really nice to see that here. It took a while, but we've got it. Now, even with the massive jump in resolution, the S3's Maestro 2 image processor, which can decode 320 megapixels per second of raw data, is more than up to the task of chewing through all those pixels. With the rapid readout sensor, along with the speedy Maestro processor, the S3 can shoot up to three frames per second at full resolution, which is just half a frame slower than the previous 007 with about half the resolution. Like previous S cameras, images can be recorded to either SD or CF cards or both at the same time. There's a slot for each right here behind the card mounted door. Now, along with the sensors still imaging capability are some updated video chops as well. We now get the option to shoot Cine 4K utilizing the entire 45 millimeter width of the medium format sensor. This is a big change from the S007 Super 35 crop mode for 4K recording, and the results should be pretty sweet for those that put it to use. You also get HDMI out, but it's only gonna support full HD for use with an external monitor, not full 4K. Honestly, this is a little disappointing, but the internal recording does seem to be far improved with bit rates up to 430 megabits per second in 10-bit 422. So there's a little bit of a silver lining there. All right, now, as far as what hasn't changed, well, most everything else. Now that might sound a bit anticlimactic in an age of constant upgrades and feature additions, but keep in mind the S007 was no slouch. Barring a move to a completely new mirrorless design, most S owners have been extremely satisfied with the elegant simplicity of the camera. And Based on feedback and conversations that I've had, most S users were focused on image quality improvements for the next generation. And this is where Leica has directed all their efforts. They focused on the sensor and the image quality and they left 
everything alone that just works. And in case you're new to the S system, let's go through a few of the things the S3 inherits from previous generations. First off, coming into a mature ecosystem, the S3 can take advantage of the full range of impressive S optics. We've got 10 lenses, six in CS variants, a full range from 24 to 180 millimeters. So from the distortion-free ultra wide angle Super Elmar S 2435, which is equivalent to an 18 millimeter, to the buttery smooth Bokeh Machine Sumacron S 100 millimeter F2, the entire lineup is truly amazing and fully equipped to take advantage of the new 64 megapixel sensor. Because remember, they engineered it from the start for digital. Now, just like the S cameras before it, the Leica S3 has 36 gasketed seals and is virtually impervious to foul weather. I've personally shot in some of the most harsh conditions around the world during my many years of photographing with the S system. And not once has a camera failed on me, not due to rain, hail, snow, or even the errant rogue wave washing over the entire camera. Yes, because that actually happened to me a while back photographing at the famous ice beach in Iceland. Other photographers who were drier than I was stood on the beach and watched in horror as a wave just washed right over the camera. But the S, it's built like a tank. It just shook it off like it was nothing. I didn't do anything special other than rinse off the camera with bottled water after the shoot. And that was it. And the camera was totally fine for the rest of the trip, which went on for days. Okay, so the S3 remains as a traditional DSLR design, meaning you got a mirror and an optical viewfinder, which is one of the best I've ever used. Bright, large, crystal clear. Okay, this viewfinder is an awesome experience. And while Leica may go mirrorless with future S cameras, there are many who are glad to see the optical finder live on. You can still use the same batteries, which each last for over a thousand shots as well as attach existing quick release plates and L brackets. Now, unlike the SL2, Q2, M10, and CL, the operational concept and user interface remains unchanged. So we've still got the four quadrant soft buttons surrounding the rear LCD. And this is actually something a lot of S users fought passionately for with Leica to keep. Some were even disappointed that Leica chose to change this on the SL2, since the original SL, the 601, matched up to the S like a baby S. So it's kind of a push here. Some are gonna welcome this and others might want the newer style. But rest assured the original design is extremely quick to work with in the field. So other than the lack of consistency of design, you're not really giving anything up. The other thing, Leica pioneered a dual shutter system to allow photographers the option to use focal plane shutter in the camera up to a 4,000th of a second they want to shoot wide open in daylight, or to simply flip a switch and enable the lens-mounted central shutter for high-speed flash sync up to 1 1,000th of a second, although this only works with CS lenses. The dual functionality is extremely valuable for on-location fashion and commercial shoots, especially if they're using battery-powered strobes. Now, don't worry. If you don't know why you might need such a fast flash sync, you probably don't. Again, I've got an article all about this on Red Dot Forum, so check out the link below. Another thing, while the GPS was removed from the SL2 from the SL, the S3 retains its built-in GPS receiver, which is concealed under the black plastic piece here on the top plate. This is a great feature for landscape and travel photographers alike. I was sad to see it go from the SL2 and I'm certainly pleased that Leica has decided to keep it for the S3. You know, even though I use the camera outside, the S3 is equally at home in the studio as it is in the field. It's got high-speed USB 3.0 tethering with a secure LIMO cable. You can connect directly into Photoshop Lightroom Classic or use the Leica Image Shuttle for tethered shooting into Capture One, and you get full camera control along with a high-res live view image on the screen. Or if you don't want to shoot tethered, you can use the S3's built-in 802.11n Wi-Fi, connect to an iPhone or an Android device using the Leica Photos 2.0 app. And if you spring an extra 50 bucks, you can get the pro version. 
and you'll get native full screen viewing on an iPad Pro along with a direct connection to Lightroom Mobile right from the app. Uh, it's pretty nice because you're gonna get nice fluid live view composition, uh, you could shoot remotely, or maybe you just wanna review and edit without the need to bring a laptop along. But be aware, these are monstrously large files and sending over Wi-Fi isn't going to be quick and probably not that pleasant if you're impatient like me. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I had the opportunity to take the S3 with me on a photo trip to Patagonia. And I think the best part of the experience is that it didn't feel different at all. Now that might sound like a weird way to describe a new product, but it meant that I didn't have to think about it. Uh, I, I didn't try to have to reach an understanding with the camera because we already knew each other. Everything was familiar. There was no learning curve. So nothing got in the way of shooting. And it certainly didn't feel any slower in, in spite the huge resolution jump. But the files, yeah, they were different and oh so nice. So now having shot with the Leica S3, what's my final verdict? Well, I'd say this. Leica's done an incredible job of taking one of my all-time favorite cameras for landscape photography, the S-Type 007, and offering a meaningful and significant upgrade where it counts, which is image quality. Somehow they have managed to fit in almost double the amount of resolution without sacrificing that 15 stops of dynamic range and at the same time offering one to two more stops of high ISO capability. They've added in full frame, medium format, Cine 4K recording, along with finally giving us long exposures up to eight minutes, but without veering away from what makes the S a great camera. It's a no nonsense, rugged workhorse. And that's what I've always loved about it. It feels great in the hand. It balances beautifully. There's just nothing like it. And of course, the images that I get back, they've taken this new technology, this new sensor, but the images are unmistakably S. They have that color, that nuance, that tonality. And of course, that malleability in post where I still can work those files like nothing else. And so for me, I think that the S3 is the natural evolution. We've got the fourth generation S camera. They didn't have to reinvent what the S camera was. They just had to make it better. And I think they have. They've kept that heart and soul and feel of the S, 
and just offered this massive jump in image quality. Look, the camera's not for everyone, and I'm not just talking about the price. Sure, it's expensive, but what you're getting is the absolute pinnacle of image quality available in Leica, which is saying something because Leica is known for image quality. It doesn't have all the features that something like the SL2 or the Q2 does, but there is something special about the files and the images that this camera produces. Certainly nothing to take away from the SL2. I think it's a fantastic camera and I've been using it a lot lately. But there is something that brings me back to the S that I think is, is special and unique. I really love the feel of shooting this camera. I like the experience. I like how connected it makes me to the subject matter. So in that regard, I think the S3 is a successful attempt by Leica. It's a successful follow-up to the S007. For those looking to get more quality, you've got it. I think the S007 still remains an amazing camera. And with the advent of the S3 on the market, I think there's going to be some great deals on used 007s that people should take advantage of to get into the system. And this certainly gives them a point to get towards. Initial deliveries of Leica S3 have just started. Pricing is set at $18,995 for the body only, which while expensive is actually a little bit less than the previous generations of the Leica S especially considering the recent price increase due to the new tariffs. If you're interested in ordering the Leica S3, you can do so at Leica Store Miami by clicking here or in the description below. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you found the video helpful. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you know when we post new content. As always, you can head to read.forum.com for the latest Leica news, reviews, technical articles, and more. Like 10 years worth of S content. Go check it out. Until then, we'll see you in the next video.